So today we're taking a look at the Athens Genesis CSX GP38-2 and this is one of the most common American freight locomotives. I've seen this in real life at CSX Oak Point Yard in the Bronx so I definitely wanted to get one. So in the front we got this yellow nose, the YN3 livery. On top we got the number boards, cab mounted headlight, and a K5 horn on top. So on the nose there are some classification lights, underneath a big CSX logo, MU cable receptacles which are different colors, and some pilot mounted ditch lights which is a first for me. We've got the coupler cut lever, a McHenry coupler, some air hoses, as well as this small EMD plow which has a nice yellow trim. In the front of the cab, all of the windows have windshield wipers, the two in the middle are connected with a bar, and there's small little printed details on the side. So let's go check out the side of it. So you can see inside the short hood, there is an embedded handbrake system right there, yellow arrow, grab iron. I have no idea what that hole is for, some stickers, the F for front, some little printed details. And the steps are painted with yellow stripes along with blue on the inside. And we also got this American flag right next to the window. There also is a sunshade and these windows, they're actually interactable. They can open up. Although I only got the rear one <laughs> opened up. Front one is kind of stiff. Then at the bottom, we got the EMD Blomberg M two axle truck. Lots of detail there, some hanging bits as well as an actual bell. There also is some yellow FRA striping and a panel with latches above. And the road number is 2721. We got this air filter on the top as well as a blower duct to cool the traction motors, an electrical cabinet air filter box. At the bottom, we have a fuel cutoff switch, a fuel filler pipe, as well as the air reservoir tank right above the fuel tank. And you can notice on the side walkway, it's slightly elevated on this section before it drops off at the end, and the hand railing is elevated too. And in the middle, we have a big CSX logo. On the body, you can see some molded on details for all the cabinets, which do open up in real life, some small warning labels, the grills for the dynamic air brake housing, which is right here. Then in the back, we have the radiator, which has two fans, a grill on the side, and some more labeling. So now let's go take a look at the rear where there is another plow. This is a weed cutter style plow. It's shorter than the front one. And again, it has that nice yellow trim. On top, we have the number boards, the CSX logo, the rear light, classification lights, the MU cable receptacles, and a ladder just on the left-hand side, sand filler hatch above. All right, so now let's go rotate this guy around and take a look at the engineer side. So one unique characteristic of this side is that it has the cooling water level sight glass. It's a small but distinctive characteristic. And you can see on this side, the walkway is more leveled out. There's no elevated section. So the engineer side does have a door to access the cab in the back. It's nicely detailed, got some steps to lead up to it as well. And I haven't mentioned this before, but there are sanding lines. Then on the bottom, I believe these are spitter valves and they're basically air compressors to fill up the air tanks. And there also is an interior where you can see the engineer's controls. There also is a wire on the inside. This side is also different because it has the handrails which are longer and make a sharp angle down while the other side does have a drop in between. On top of the hood, there is a square plate as well as a sand filler hatch right at the tip. And here's another view of the K5 horn and you might notice it is actually a different color blue. There's also these Sinclair antennas on top. One is actually really small and the cab roof is white. Behind the cab, we have some vents up here. It's really small. There are also four exhaust stacks and I have read that there's another one that has two. There's a single fan in the middle and then two extra fans in the back. Now these fans are actually see-through so they're pretty cool. You can also see the molded on detailing, all the rivets and bolts, the tiny little lifting rings and a wide grab iron in the back. Here's what it looks like the Blomberg M truck. It's my first two axle locomotive. All right so now let's compare it to my other CSX locomotives, the SD40-3 and the ET44. So the color for Ather and CSX is actually a little bit different from scale trains which are more of a darker tint blue while Ather is kind of a more bluer blue, if that makes sense. The Jeevo is more of a mainline locomotive, while the SD40-3, the SpongeBob cab, and the GP38, they're more of road switchers. Although they're both CSX road switchers, they are really different in many ways. So they have a different style and color for the number boards. The plows are different sizes. You can see the placement of the ditch lights are different, anti-climber versus pilot. You can see SpongeBob, they rebuilt the nose so it looks a lot more boxy. And the way they did the fans on the roof are different as well. The Scale Trains radiator fans are shinier and they kind of raise towards the top, while Atherns are more recessed. They also use different colors for the white on top of the cab. Scale Trains has a cool white, while Atherns more of a warm white. They also have different logos. This is a CSX boxcar logo, which was supposed to replace the older one. Big CSX letters, which they reverted to nowadays. And the backs are also different. One has just lights, no plow, while the other one has no ditch lights and a plow. So now we have our CSX family. Let's run some trains.
so for my final thoughts, I think the Athen Genesis CSX GP38-2 is a great addition if you like CSX because this is actually a really common locomotive. I actually do like the color that Athen used for their CSX Dark Future livery. The blue is brighter than scale trains, which are darker, so it kind of pops out a little more, although if you're running the two together, the colors aren't going to be super, super different. I like how they added the yellow trim plow because I've seen that before. I didn't think they would actually model this in HO scale, they would just use a regular plow. It's also interesting they had a rear mounted plow as well, which was a totally different style. I also did want a GP38-2 specifically because it's one of the major American freight locomotives like you see this everywhere. And I do like the fact that I got to see this in real life. I saw it at the CSX Oak Point Yard, you can see my rail fanning video. I think it's also unique that it has pilot mounted ditch lights and class lights in the front and the back. The only negative thing I have to say is the road number paint job on the engineer side has some blobs in it, it's not quite uniform. But other than that, I'm pretty satisfied with this locomotive. And if you're wondering where I got it, I got it from LombardHobby.com. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, make sure you hit that like button down below, subscribe if you had already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.